Anyway, um, did you finish Thriller Bark? I did, yes. Um, uh, I finished Thriller Bark. I'm in the Laboon arc, uh, you know, the, the Laboon stuff. And now I've moved on to the next season. Uh, but I haven't gotten fully into it yet. Just like Fish Island clearly is going to be an arc that revolves around like human trafficking and slavery, very obviously. So that's kind of cool. That's going to be interesting to see. Speaking of slavery, as a matter of fact, another anime that is surprisingly, I would, I'm not going to say Marxist, but like literally recognizes the concept between indentured servitude and wage slavery is Vinland Saga which I never would have guessed would be the type of anime to address such an issue. Uh, I'm on Vinland Saga season two, and honestly, it's fucking, it, it's kind of slow. It's kind of hectic. It's kind of traumatic. It's kind of hard to watch, okay? I'm gonna give you guys this. I'll tell you this much. If you watch Vinland Saga season one and you think Vinland Saga season two is gonna be similar, well, you got another thing coming your way, okay? It's gonna fuck you up. It's gonna be hard as fuck to watch it first like it literally is hard to watch i think ultimately it will be worth it though because i do love thorfinn so we'll see what happens i assume it's worth it but like there is a lot of like farming simulator shit going on which will piss you off hard to watch isn't gory or boring no hard to watch isn't like literally no gore happens for a while it literally went from like berserk style murder porn to fucking farming simulator animal crossing with slavery which is like such a wild shift and a change of pace for from one season to the next. You're like, what the f just happened? Why did you just like slap me in the face with this Stardew Valley shit, you know? Uh, and honestly, I think it'll get good. But there's a couple lines where like literally a slave, they show you from the pr perspective of slaves, how even though this master uh, technically is like very nice to them and says like, you can buy out your indentured servitude, and is like significantly nicer than the expectation. The farm hands that work under the master literally mistreat the slaves worse than the master does. And very quickly, the, the slave finds out, like one of the one of the two slaves finds out, like it's like they're doing this to us because they themselves are no better than we are as far as their class position. But they're doing this to us specifically so that they can feel like there's something un someone underneath them, which is which is something that, uh, you know, even uh, liberal academics have talked about uh, uh, as far as um, Ta-Nehisi Coates famously wrote about this exact, I mean, many people have, but Ta-Nehisi Coates famously wrote about this as far as like in the reconstruction era and how, um, you know, white working class people were pinned against uh, recently freed African men and women. And uh, the concept was, uh, at least I'm not an N-word. That was always the motivating principle behind what indentured servants and literally fucking white people who were also wage slaves, that was the, the attitude, which is um, how, you know, racial dynamics utilized by capital owners have oftentimes destroyed class solidarity among the working class, which is, um, you know, that that is very prescient to this day. Obviously, that is, um, you know, that is what... Uh, I mean, it is very real. And it's interesting seeing that play out in uh, Dane law in England uh, amongst like, uh, you know, enslaved uh, Danes. It's it's very interesting. Obviously, it's not the same as like uh, chattel slavery because this is indentured servitude. There is like a, there's a there's a prospect of liberation at the end of it. You can like buy your way out, even though the conditions are still awful. And they show that very well. So Vinland Saga season two, surprising, shocking wonderful as well you know very good lamau anglophile anime is hilarious yeah it is actually really interesting to see that the reason that marx disliked the bourgeoisie more than the aristocracy he laid out that really clearly and he hated that after the industrial revolution the aristocracy acted as they always did but the factory owners who were very recently the same as the lower class were mistreating their fellow people so much do you think racial disparity should be discounted as to emphasize class solidarity no, I have never made that argument, and I do not think that that's an argument that is adequate. I think that's ahistorical. I think racial disparities should be recognized, acknowledged. Racial wrongs need to be corrected. This is something that I talk about quite frequently. Um, I think that 
as far as racial animosity, it should be abolished. Yes, especially in an or in an effort to build a successful working class movement. Yes, especially in a country like the United States of America, you need to move beyond racial resentment because racial resentment works to divide the working class, even though black men, black women, when they are working class, they are united by their interests with white men and white women. And white people need to recognize that. White people need to acknowledge that. Um, so that's a that's a huge problem. Until racial wrongs are corrected, we can't approach the subject of being colorblind. Exactly. And racial wrongs have not been corrected and most likely will never be corrected. Let's be f***ing real because it kind of makes the world go round. So, you know, I'm not going to sit here and act like uh, we need to have a colorblind approach to, to American issues. Like when the systems themselves are not colorblind. You're, all you're doing is blinding yourself to the realities that, you know, black and brown people face in this country.